Hello, how are you? I hope you're knitting something fun. This is like full on knitting season. I wanted to come in here and show you. I finished the color work for the body of the Birkin. And, um, you know, I'm so happy to be done with this part of it. <laughs> I have to say, I think, you know, every time I do a larger knitting project and one with color work, I always learn something new. And this time I really have learned how to do make one left. I hate doing make one left. I find it to be so fiddly and I'm always so worried that everything's going to come flying off the needles and it does sometimes and I have to like pick up stitches quick. You know, um, and Elizabeth Zimmerman would always say like, you know, don't like essentially don't lose your shit, like pick up your, pick up your stitches, <laughs> you know, but like she never, she didn't put it that way. But so I really, but I, I, I kind of lose my shit when I get to a point where I feel like I'm going to drop my stitches, but this, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I, you know, it's hard to say how it's going to really look because when this yarn that I'm using uh, which is a Falkland yarn and it's it's really lovely to work with it's it's um, it's soft it's um, it's not hard on your fingers it splits a little bit um, I can't remember the name of the yarn sorry I will oh wait what's this maybe this is something here um, it is called here we go It is called, oh, this is Madeline Tosh. The yellow is Madeline Tosh. Um, and this is, this is a Falkland yarn that I have not seen before. I will have to find out what this is and I'll put it in the comments. This is a really nice yarn. I, I do like this yarn to work with. It splits a little bit, but it's nice. And when, you know, and I felt I, um, I blocked a little bit of it and it's, it really, it knits up to be a nice, um, it knits up on a nut like a nice flat smooth uh drapey kind of fabric which i like but it's very thick and you know i don't know how it's going to be in color work so we'll we'll see how it goes you know this is always a journey always a mystery until the final until you're finished but i am done with the color work i'm done with make one left although i'm sure i'm going to have to do that now i think we actually decrease i was looking ahead so it's an interesting process doing you know a top down sweater as opposed to a bottom up so you don't have that color work to look forward to you have a lot of easy knitting to look forward to so it's really nice to have that behind you and also to know that it like because I've tried it on I put it over and to know that it's gonna like fit your head and shoulders and that it's gonna be you know fit in a nice way is is really nice and what's also really nice about a top down which has been said by so many others is that you can gauge the length right you can see how you want it to look and so I'm super excited to finish up with this I'm really I'm like speeding I'm plowing through my Birkin because I just have a chunk of time before I start working again and um, and it's just I'm so inspired to do this to do my knitting because the weather is you know here it is so beautiful I'm going to try to put some you know pictures up of how it looks it's really really just gorgeous everything is just so magnificent the colors are gorgeous the air it's the wet this week is really warm so I'm able to get some my tomatoes I think I'm gonna get another batch of tomatoes because they were green on the vine and it was chilly and I thought I'm never gonna you know they're gonna never gonna ripen but now I think it's been warm enough. This week is like in the mid 70s in the afternoon and it goes down to about 50 at night. I actually got a pepper from the garden, but I have uh, my team, I have about 15 tomatoes that I just may get. And um, how I'm making them is I'm fermenting them and it's so delicious. It's, um, I love to ferment vegetables from the garden uh, as opposed to canning or preserving them. Because I just, you know, I love the lacto ferment. It's it's really good for your gut, and I think it just tastes so delicious. And it's super easy. You just, you know, I take a half gallon ball jar, and I put the tomatoes in. I put in two tablespoons of coarse sea salt. I fill it with 
filtered water, I add some garlic, sage, whatever fresh herbs I have, and then I seal it and you basically put it in a dark kind of pantry-like corner and you just check on it every, every week or so, you uh, check on it. And it, the tomatoes are so flavorful and what you can do is you can actually put them in a blender and puree them for a really delicious raw sauce. So it's really good. I encourage you to try that. Um, but I wanted to just share with you some personal uh, thoughts that I had about knitting, creativity, and depression. And um, I don't know how it occurred to me. I was, um, you know, I was thinking about Elizabeth Zimmerman. I had just recently posted a video about Elizabeth Zimmerman, and I thought about the courage that it took for her to do the work she did. And you know, I know that there's people more courageous than her, but I just thought about the courage that it took to go out there and really believe in yourself to such an extent that she, as she did and to kind of do, change knitting as we know it. Um, and certainly for the time she was, you know, she was not, I, you know, I don't know that she ever reached mainstream popularity in her maybe late, late, late in her life. Um, but I admire people who have the courage to be renegades in their field. And so I thought about that and I thought about like the creative impulse, how much that propels us. And, um, you know, when I'm inspired to do a sweater, nothing, will, I mean, I, I obsess about it. I think about it. I knit, you know, every minute I have. And as I'm sure, you know, those of you who knit do. And I thought about how that, you know, that energy, that way of being is like the antidote to depression. It's just the opposite. It's the polar opposite of depression, right? And I thought about how, uh, you know, really creativity. And when I found out about knitting and, you know, I wasn't raised to be a knitter, you know, no one in my family did creative work like that. And it was only when my children were, were small and I was at a Waldorf school for them in nursery school. And I saw these beautiful knitted objects and I was like, oh, I, you know, I really, I was so inspired to do it. I, I'm like, I want that. I want to do that. And so I was really inspired to learn. And then I found out, you know, as I shared yesterday about Elizabeth Zimmerman and I read and I watched, you know, her videos and, um, and then I was just, you know, this inspiration just carries you forward and you want to do more and more. And so that's the opposite of depression. Depression is this uninspired feeling and it's, it brings you from negative thought into negative emotion and then back into negative thought. And it's this downward loop, you know, um, feedback, this negative feedback loop that you're just, it's really hard to get out of. And so the creative inspiration behind knitting is so um, antidotal to depression. And I've thought about that. And, you know, I, I've, I, I, I have had depression in my life and um, it's not what I would consider to be an active problem now. And, um, you know, probably not really for the last 15 years, 20 years. But earlier in my life, it was really a problem. And um, I thought about if I had been raised in a more creative way, perhaps I might not have ever had, or had the depression would have been a lot less prominent, I think because I just had no outlet for all of that creativity that was inside of me. And all of us are creative in one way or the other. And I think it's just really important to connect with that creativity in one way, to foster it, to let it come out um, so there's that part of the, so there's the creative aspect that's connected to knitting and depression. And then there's this, the actual like methodical process of knitting. And, you know, when I'm doing this color work, I'm not thinking of anything other than, you know, my stitch count, I'm counting, I'm making sure that, you know, I'm looking at the pattern, I'm looking at my, my, my rows and I'm making sure that the colors match in the top row and the second row. I'm making sure that I'm not missing things. I'm counting stitches. I'm doing all these things. It's a really focused mind activity. And what happens when you do this kind of focused mind activity is you actually like stop thinking about yourself and you stop thinking the, you know, you stop having the obsessive thoughts that we all have that are part of being a human being. Um, but they're kind of self-obsessed and they're, um, they're not helpful. And there's this expression that, you know, you can't think your way out of a prison made of thought. And 
it feels like that, right? Especially when we're feeling depressed, it feels like we're just trapped in negative thoughts. And so, um, so the actual act of knitting is also um, mindful, and it helps you to kind of transcend the thinking mind, which is, um, you know, a really um, a really big part of of escaping from the trap of negative thinking of depression. Of course, I'm not talking about people who really have, you know, serious, serious depression. And of course, and I have, I myself have been through therapy and I'm not saying that, you know, knitting is the solution, but I do think it's very interesting that, you know, when we think about mindfulness and depression and knitting is actually a mindful activity that can help us to transcend depressive thinking um, for a number of reasons. So, um, yeah, so I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Those are my thoughts on that. I'd love to hear if anyone else has had a similar experience with depression or, um, you know, it seems to me a lot of knitters I know are, uh, have experienced some form of depression in one way or another. Uh, I guess so many people have, right? It's like so common. Um, com depression is a big, big, big problem. So Anyway, I hope you're having a wonderful day and um, I hope you're knitting something warm and fun and uh, I can't wait to get finished with this and I will be back when I am to show you how it looks. All right, see you later. Bye.